In this video, I am going to show you how we are going to make an attempt at having a traditional Sunday roast. Now, roast uh, isn't referring to the, the type of meat that we're using. A roast is literally, they, it means the act of doing something. You, uh, the act of cooking, baking the chicken, you're roasting the chicken. That's what it's referring to. So when we were in England, uh, we had a Sunday roast and we absolutely loved it. And uh, Kevin had a roasted chicken with potatoes and carrots. And so that's what we were gonna do. We um, uh, didn't get my peas out. I even bought a can of peas. So, and we both like peas. We just, it's just not something I buy all the time. So I wanted to show you uh, the process that I'm going through to um, have the, the Sunday roast. Uh, it's not going to be exactly uh, like everyone's uh, Sunday roast in England. And I'm sure if, if you are in, uh, or the United Kingdom, I'm sure if you're in the United Kingdom, different families use different spices for everything, just like they do here. So uh, what I have, I'm going to roast. I have this whole chicken and it was not frozen. I don't, that doesn't matter. I mean, I could have, uh, if I had had more time, I could have done that. But it was uh, just um, in a refrigerated uh, container at Kroger. And then we're gonna have peas with it. Uh, but with the whole chicken, I'm gonna be using all of these spices, which I will go over when we get to that point. I'm going to be using onion and carrots and potatoes and then Kevin will be making the Yorkshire pudding. So Kevin will uh, be doing that part of the video. And uh, so right now what I'm gonna do is I, I actually, if I wanted to be precise, I would have bought long carrots and had those, but I already had these in the refrigerator. So I'm still going to try to, to be as exact as I can. And I'm gonna take these, you know, I was gonna take them and cut them lengthwise. That's how they have them over there. Yeah, and that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to cut these uh, lengthwise so that you have a lot of uh, longer pieces like this. So I actually changed my mind what I'm gonna do first because I got to thinking about it. Um, I'm actually going to open the chicken and lay it in my pan, my roasting pan first. And then I'm going to, uh, as I'm cutting up the carrots and stuff, I can lay that around the chicken. So this chicken says it's a whole chicken and it says it contains up to 15%. My oven's preheated. I have it on 350. Um, it says it contains up to 15% chicken broth, sea salt flavorings, bone in, skin on. We don't care anything about that. So, um, I want to, by it saying that, I want to save every bit of the juice that's in here. Even if it's bloody looking, I still want to save it. And I probably should take off my rings. Okay, so, I'm gonna try to do this without making a huge mess. Yeah, that juice is literally right at the top. So this is how I'm gonna do it. Gonna try to squeeze it out before I open it any further because I, I definitely would have squeezed that out. check it to make sure that they haven't put anything and they did there is a packet inside this is this was inside the chicken and a lot of people like my mom when she was making gravy she would put this in water and make gravy out of that um, I do not keep that so we won't need that so I just want to give it one final look and no there's nothing in there so I have that laying in my pan and I'm going to wash my hands now and I'll be back. So this is how the chicken looks and I'll, I know a lot of you have told me that you wash your uh, meat off before you cook it. I have never done that in my life and I have not died yet. 
So I think it's okay, it bakes. Uh, but this will be the first time I have ever roasted a chicken like this without putting it in um, Reynolds wrap. I always put aluminum foil around it, but none of the recipes that Kevin and I looked at required putting it in aluminum foil. So Kevin is in here. So I have given him the fun, fun job of uh, cutting the onion for me. And he's just gonna cut this in some hunks and um, put it on the sides with the potatoes and the carrots. And uh, so I'll show you how all that looks when we get it finished. Okay, here's how it looks in the pan, the chicken, and then there's a onion and potatoes. And you see we did it, cut them in big hunks and then the carrots are on the bottom. And then Kevin's gonna tell you how much of each one of these uh, seasonings we need. So we're gonna use one tablespoon of salt, two teaspoons of paprika, one and a half teaspoons of onion powder and garlic powder and dried basil. So one and a half of each of those. And one teaspoon of dried mustard, one teaspoon of cumin, and two teaspoons of pepper. And one half teaspoon, just a half a teaspoon of the dried thyme. This is all those uh, seasonings that I just showed you. I've just mixed them up in a bowl. And so now I didn't put any, um, any butter. I have not put any uh, liquid in this at all, but other than the liquid that came out of the package. So I'm going to put some of this on. I'll probably put um, half of it on now and then um, let it roast for a little while and get some more juices going. And um, I'm going to see how it does and then I'll add some more. I won't add it all right now. That's nice and covered right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna leave the rest of this for later. And so I'm, I'm gonna start it out at 350. Um, I don't even know what time it is, but I will let you know how long. Um, it's uh, 330 right now, so we'll check on it again probably in about uh, two hours. So this is how it looks after two hours. And you can see there is, there is lots of juice in the bottom. I'm just gonna move some of these vegetables around a little bit. I, I wish that you all could smell what Kevin and I have been smelling because it just smells fantastic. All of these spices smell wonderful. And Guido has been like, he's been like worrying us to death. And I think it's because he smells this food and he thinks it's time for him to eat and it's not he's just um he's just smelling this delicious food so what i'm gonna do is i want uh i want to make more juice so the recipe said that you could um because i want i'm gonna end up making gravy we're gonna have tomorrow or we're gonna have um we're gonna have Yorkshire pudding and you wanna have some gravy. So in order to make more juice, I'm gonna use butter. It said that you could add butter, but that is a lot, that's a lot of juice. I don't know if you all can see it, uh, that or not, but that's a lot of juice on its own. And I could even drain some of that off before I put butter in it. Um, but I don't think it'll hurt to just add the butter to it just like it is. I really there would be really there's no point in draining it off I guess so I just have a stick of butter I have two two halves here so what I've done now is I've turned it over and I know it looks really 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 ugly <laughs> because uh, this is the side that should never be seen. But I'm gonna take more of these spices and I'm gonna put it on the underside. And I still have not used all of that. I still have like a third of that left. And I've only used half a stick, so I'm gonna go ahead and put my other stick. You can see one stick is just here on the side and it will melt as soon as I put it in the oven. So I'll put the other stick over here. 
and I'm gonna, uh, since I turned it over, I'm gonna put it back in the oven for another hour. So I didn't end up leaving the chicken in for an hour. I took it out at 40 minutes. So it was actually in for two hours and 40 minutes. Uh, but I turned it back over and what I did was I got my dipper out and I got all the juice that I could and I put it in this bowl. So this will go in the refrigerator tonight. I will, um, after it cools off, I will let this cool off and then I'm gonna cover this, let it go in the refrigerator and then tomorrow morning I'm gonna lay it out and let it get more to room temperature and then I will put it back in the oven and let it heat up. I will probably put um, another half stick of butter in there at least. Um, I might use some more of the seasonings on the potatoes, but I don't think I need any more on the chicken. Kevin and I actually uh, took a little taste of the uh, potato and it is absolutely wonderful. Really, really good flavor. So I would suggest using this seasoning and then I'll show you what we're going to do with our peas tomorrow as well. So I kept this in the refrigerator covered with a piece of aluminum foil, aluminum. And uh, so I've just uncovered it, literally just uncovered it. I have a half a stick of butter because yesterday we took most of the liquid out and put it in a bowl, which I've taken the bowl out of the refrigerator too. So I'm just gonna put half a stick of butter in here. Uh, there is a little bit of liquid left. So I just opened my can of peas and I'm gonna put it in here. I've seen it done like this um, online. Some people add it to the pan, some people don't. Uh, when you add it all to the pan like this, it's really a one pot dish. Uh, but So you just have um, carrots and uh, your carrots and your potatoes and your onion and now your peas and your chicken. So I'm going to put this in the oven now and let everything get uh, really hot. Okay, I took the, uh, this is the chicken juice from the bowl and I put it in here and I warmed it up. That will be my gravy for my Yorkshire pudding. This is my chicken. It looks awesome. It's, you can see the steam coming off of it. It's nice and hot. And now Kevin is ready to make the Yorkshire pudding. But we had to jack up the oven first. Yeah. Crank it up. Yeah. Do you want me to start? Yeah, start. Right. Go. The oven is on 440 degrees and a con convection oven. So if you were not doing a convection, if you're doing a regular oven, I guess you turn it up. Uh, it's five or ten degrees more than that. So about 450 if you if you're not doing a convection oven. So first thing you want to do, well, get your ingredients out. You'll need a 12 uh, cup muffin tin. You need oil, and I just put it in this thing to get it in here easier. That's all I'm doing. It's just vegetable oil. If you have a, we have a great big jug of vegetable oil. If you have a small container of vegetable oil, you can go, you'll see why. Um, you need 140 grams of plain flour. This is just regular flour. Um, four eggs, which I've got back here in the back. Just four regular eggs. 200 milliliters of milk, which ends up being about just a little less than a cup. I don't know how much it is. Um, and then, like I said, you need the oil. So this is what you do. 440 degrees on the oven, you're gonna fill, not fill, you're gonna pour a little oil into each one of these and you want it to, you want it to fill the bottom a little bit. And do all 12 of them. And there was no measurement for this on the recipe, so it just said, it said drizzle. And then I watched a video of it, the same person making it, and that's about how much she put in there. She kind of just filled the, the bottom up. All right, so what you want to do is get this in the oven, and you want to leave it in there about 10 minutes, because you want it to get really good and hot. I need to move my thing up, so I'll give you just a second. He, right. he had to move the rack up, but yeah. we had moved it down to cook the chicken. So go ahead and put that in the oven for about 10 minutes, because you want it to get really good and hot. So I'm going to set a timer on a tiny spoon for about 10 minutes and then I'll make the batter. So now I'm done with the oil actually, so I'll pour that back in the container. So what, you get your flour and I just took, you need a wire whisk and I just kind of took the whisk and made a little bowl in the middle just to kind of be able to put my milk and stuff. So I'm gonna take my 200 milliliters of milk and pour right in the middle. And my four eggs and I'll drop those in the middle. I'm gonna 
whisk in from the center and try to keep the lumps out because you want it really good and smooth. I actually probably should have just done the eggs first and then added the milk after it was already smooth, but it's too late now. lumps out. Um, I did make a slight mistake and I'll just tell you now so you can not make the mistake when I did it. When you put your flour in, you make the cup, go ahead and put your four eggs in the middle, not your milk. Mix in or beat in the eggs into the flour until it's smooth and then slowly add your milk in and then you won't have to fight with the lumps. I got all the lumps out. I'm pretty sure I don't see any lumps in here. It looks pretty smooth, but I did have to work at it a little bit. So if you do it that method, you're not going to get as many lumps. So go ahead and pour it into a big measuring cup. Or some, they call it a jug over there, but if you Pour it into a measuring cup, it's a lot easier to deal with pouring it into the cups. So now I'm just, make sure this is actually ready to go when the pan comes out because what's going to happen is uh, the pan, you need to pretty much immediately, while it's still hot, um, start pouring these into the cups and then get them back in the oven. So you don't want, uh, you don't want to wait around waiting to pour batter into the cup. So be ready. All right, it's been 10 minutes, and I'm gonna take this out. Be really careful because it's, the oil is gonna be, I'm hoping, gonna be really, really hot. Okay. So now what you wanna do is, you wanna pour this in, and it doesn't take a lot, and it should sizzle. But you wanna be pretty quick. Some of these I wonder if I put too much oil in, but we shall see. Um, the recipe also said that you can take this batter, you can make the batter up uh, 24 hours ahead of time, so you can make it up the night before, although it didn't take very long. So, see my oil is starting to get a little cool ball. All right, and then put them back in the oven, 20 to 25 minutes. Do not open the oven at all for at least the first 15 minutes is what it's at. So get these back in the oven, and I'm gonna set a timer for 20 minutes, and then um, and then I'll check on. This is the uh, liquid from the chicken, and I'm just going to add. This is a how much do you think that is, Gavin? Right, a tablespoon. Right, a tablespoon. About a tablespoon of flour right in there. And I'm going to stir it. And then if it needs more, I'll add more. I know what it should look like. You're just trying to thicken it a little bit. Trying to thicken it so that you can put it over uh, the chicken or over your uh, Yorkshire pudding. That looks awesome. Yeah. But it does need to be thicker. Yeah. So I'm going to put another, what do you think, another big spoonful? Yeah. And uh, if you do this at home, it's gonna, the amount of flour that you use is gonna depend on the amount of chicken uh, broth you have. So, now that looks awesome. That is a lot thicker. To me, that, that looks really good. What do you think, Kevin? Do mm -hmm. you think it needs more, good. or yeah, you think it's good? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I don't have a gravy ladle, so I'm just gonna be putting it in this bowl and uh or a gravy boat i don't have a gravy boat so i'm just gonna put it in this bowl and we can ladle it out in here but i'm gonna leave it on the heat for a little while until we're ready to eat all right here they are they didn't rise quite as much as i was hoping um, but they look pretty good and see they still have some oil in them so i'm wondering if i didn't put too much oil in some of them because um, i don't remember the one i watched having oil in the bottom of them they might have i don't i don't still remember so anyway they still look really good. 